Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis, thank you all for stopping by to watch. I wanted to make a video on prepping on the cheap or you know, for those that may not have the money to just go out and get prepared all at once because well, most of us don't. I mean, there may be some of you watching that can afford to go out there and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not putting you folks down any more than I would put down someone that can't afford it. Uh, but this is just the reality. The, you know, the average person can't just go out and drop thousands of dollars all at once and, and, and have everything that they think they need to be prepared. Uh, so a lot of times we have to, we have to be, uh, you know, use some ingenuity, uh, some creative thinking to figure out a, the best way to come up with the stuff that we need uh, with the smallest amount of money spent. And so while I don't really have any deep insights into how to do that, um, I do have some ideas and hopefully it can spark the conversation, get your brain, the gears in your brain kind of moving and maybe some people will be dropping comments in the uh, down below on things that's worked for them and how they've done it. Um, I've taken this so seriously today that I'm using notes, which I rarely ever do. Um, and like I said, this is some, a lot of this stuff I have covered in various different videos. I'm just kind of trying to put it all together. Um, and and give you some ideas on how to do this so let's start off from the beginning number one um when it comes to food uh the places that we that the stuff that we actually buy not stuff that we produce on our own you know if we can uh food or whatever that's different but where we're buying our food a lot of times we're buying it at discount and grocery uh, discount and salvage grocery stores uh, most areas probably have those uh, you sometimes have to do a little digging around uh, to try to find places like this but uh, if you're not familiar with them these are grocery stores uh, that that buy stuff at, at a discount so it's not just your typical run-of-the-mill grocery stores maybe uh, you know a store or a warehouse was selling off some old stock uh, some of this stuff may be slightly out of date maybe getting close to being out of date uh, but they can you know purchase maybe a whole semi truckload of it for a big discount and then turn around and sell it back to you at a big discount don't be too scared of those uh, expiration dates because they're not actually expiration dates. Those are sell-by dates. Uh, most food will last much longer, uh, especially things like canned goods and stuff, as long as it's not damaged. Now, if you've got cans that are all dented up and damaged, then you need to be careful with that because it's possible that it's broken its seal and it's not going to last that long. But um, most of the time, you know, there's a couple that we go to around here and, and, and it changes. Their stock changes all the time and you can go in there and uh, the last time we went and they had pallets of big cases of canned goods. And, and you, buy, you would buy the entire case of canned goods and it was much cheaper than pur purchasing, excuse me, at uh, your normal grocery store. So uh, check out places like that that you can get, um, you know, quite a bit uh, more bulk uh, at, a, at a cheaper price and then a lot of times especially at the ones that we go to uh, they don't just have the normal little like 16 ounce cans a lot of times they have the big number 10 restaurant canned foods um, and you can get that stuff pretty cheap also another way is buying in bulk with friends a lot of places um, you can buy stuff cheaper uh, sometimes like restaurant uh, supply stores uh, sometimes if you have a, a distributor in your area there are times that you can uh, if you buy enough of bulk, maybe like a whole truckload of a particular item, you can get that price down to where it's, it's quite cheap. Uh, so, so do some research on that. And then if you, you know, have three or four families or something and you decide to put your money together to maybe, you know, buy a, a pickup truckload full of rice or something like that, uh, you can get that price down quite a bit. Uh, farm stores is another place uh, to stock up on things. <clears throat> You can get salt uh, at farm stores. Uh, this stuff is, is it's it's edible. Okay, um, I, maybe I shouldn't say that. I'll probably get in trouble for that. Um, I, I can't say that it's edible. I'm fine with eating it. Uh, and there's there's different brands and eat different brands of like salt and the bulk corn and stuff are different. 
Um, I've bought some that, the you know, like say the bulk dried corn, it's just filthy. I mean, it's just so much dirt and debris in it. There's no way I'd eat it. And then there's others I've bought that's uh, super clean and it even says on it, uh, super clean. And you know, you'll pay six, seven dollars for a 50 pound bag. Uh, of corn which is a lot of food uh, that's all dried and and you you cannot tell any difference to that uh, if you bought it that it's made for human consumption same way with the salt um, you know like your your redmond salt uh, your 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 store brand human consumption brand like sea salts and stuff a lot of times you can buy it by the exact same brand typically it's a little bit more coarsely ground um, but <clears throat> super cheap you know 25 and 50 pound bags of that stuff and you know it may not be the salt that i use on a daily basis but it, when i need it uh and it's an emergency i've got plenty of it and i'm not going to complain then uh some other stuff uh Secondhand thrift stores, that kind of stuff, they're a great place to stock up and, and find different items. Yeah, you kind of have to dig around for them. Um, you know, maybe you'll spend the day there and not find anything. And other times you feel like you've just, you know, filled up the back of the car with stuff that you find. Um, it, you can, you, you really have to uh, dig around, but a lot of times you can find some good stuff. Garage sales is another place. Uh, a lot of people have free items. Maybe they'll post it on Craigslist or Marketplace. They'll just have, you know, curbside pickups. Um, and a lot of times this may not be gear, but you can find lumber and different materials to around your homestead. You'd be surprised. Um, there's been uh, times that, that I have, um, you know, just through the course of life, find out people that have maybe a pile of junk that they want hauled off to a to a junkyard. If you have a pickup truck, they'll you can haul it off for them, and and keep anything that's that's good out of it. And I I built a chicken coop once that way. This guy had a pile of junk behind his barn, and he needed it all hauled off. So I made a little bit of money hauling it off, but out of that pile of junk there was enough stuff in there that i built a chicken coop out of it so i figured i made out pretty good on that one um, at these kind of thrift stores and stuff you can find uh, books uh, usually really cheap uh, old medical books old nursing books uh, old how-to books uh, great stuff homeschooling type books that you can get for your kids another thing that i find around here and maybe it's just unique to this area but there's some thrift stores around here the kind that are non-profit you know people donate to them uh, kind of like a goodwill but they're locally run and a lot of times i find medical stuff and what the the deal is is that let's say someone is taking care of a parent in their home and and they die and then they have all this medical uh, stuff. A lot of times they donate it to these kind of places. And, and I have found different types of braces and crutches. I have found boxes of, you know, like gauze bandage. And maybe, you know, half of the box is gone or a portion of the box is gone. But the rest of it's still packaged up good and you can get it really cheap. Um, I even have bought uh, things like uh, blood uh, glucose monitors and the, and the strips and all that still sealed up and packaged for, for very cheap. So uh, you can find that kind of stuff at these thrift stores. Another way to, to, to do things is just to learn to make it yourself. Okay, there's a lot of stuff and I talk up. This is where we get into the skills is just building it yourself. We, we, we live in a society that <clears throat> that everything is is instant and everything is prefabbed and you know how many people eat their their meals at home out of a box it cracks me up in fact my wife and i was talking about this the other day a lot of the younger generation um they consider cooking at home like actually being having this skill to cook uh is you know buying something in the store that's prepackaged or frozen and coming home and warming it up and that makes them a good cook or something uh, learn to to do things from scratch learn to make things on your own uh, there's a lot of items when it comes to prepping that you can make on your own you can make your own water filter uh, much like the the Berkey's the gravity fed the Alexa pure water filters and those are good um, but you can actually make your own for a fraction of the price um, building your own chicken coops I mentioned that earlier um, chickens are an excellent um, food source on a, on a homestead, but you have to have a place to keep them. And because of the fad of backyard chickens, you can buy these chicken, small chicken coops all over the place, but my goodness, the price of them are just absolutely crazy, I think. And even considering the price of lumber right now, um, you can still build a chicken coop much cheaper than what you purchase these from. And I know a lot of people want their chicken coops looking like a little dollhouse and stuff, but the chickens don't care. 
They really don't care. And I built a chicken coop probably seven, eight times the size or has the capacity of holding that many more chickens than the little chicken coops you see sitting out the front of the you know big box stores. And I built it for less than what you would pay for one of those. So that kind of stuff. Dehydrators, I mentioned chicken coops, but sheds. Learn to sew, learn to crochet, learn to can. Um, this is ways that you can prepare. You know, if you're crocheting, you can make a lot of blankets. Uh, my mother, uh, when I was growing up, most of the blankets in our house was all stuff that she crocheted. And, and it's pretty cheap compared to purchasing one. Uh, it's a lot better, I think, or quilting, the same kind of concept. Uh, sewing, learning to make things, or at least mend things. Uh, at these thrift stores, a lot of times you can buy, um, you know, like heavy coats, uh, winter coats, farm you know, type of uh, clothing, but maybe it has a tear or a rip in it, and you can buy it really cheap, go home and mend it, and then you have a, a perfectly fine uh, piece of clothing. Obviously canning, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, canning is uh, an excellent way to build up food. Yeah, you have to make the initial purchase of glass jars and the lids and the rings. And at times lately, it's been hard to get those. But if you look around, if you check on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and other places like that, don't pay a ridiculous price. In the end, it's going to pay for itself because uh, after that initial purchase of those items, the actual canning it is, is very cheap. Uh, so that's one way. Don't be afraid to purchase old gear, old camping gear, uh, old Boy Scout gear. I know it's cool. It's a cool thing in the prepping world to have the latest, greatest, fastest, high speed, cool gear that makes you look like you're part of SEAL Team 6. The reality is, is that's not necessary at all, folks. It's not. Um, you know, you go back to the old survivalists in the 60s and the 70s, and then, and then just the, the woodsmen that, that were going out, you know, 50 to 70 years ago and hunting. Uh, they didn't have all that high-tech gear. They didn't have all that fancy gear. And so if you go back and you try to find some of that old, old gear, whether it's ex-military gear or just old Boy Scout type gear, camping gear, uh, you can you can use that kind of stuff uh, still, and it's very good quality. The same concept as tools, uh, whether it's garden tools, tools in your workshop, um, the old stuff. Yeah, you may need a little WD-40 to clean it up and, and 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 you know loosen it up that kind of stuff. But man, it's it's good quality stuff. Um, I would rather have an old rusty shovel that's 100 years old than to go out and buy any new shovel on the market, period. I, I don't care how expensive it is. I, I promise you some old shovel is probably going to, it's going to be better. Uh, so um, don't be afraid to use old stuff. Learn how to repair it, how to do the maintenance on it to keep it going uh, because you can spend a whole lot less money and, and end up usually having a lot better quality of stuff. Uh, same way with kitchen items. Um, you know, like the old old grinders that you've seen maybe your grandmothers use and stuff. A lot of times you can pick those up at thrift stores and things for a pretty cheap price compared to uh, maybe some new fancy uh, grinder or flour mill or something like that uh, that looks all fancy, uh, but it, it's, it's a lot more expensive and generally it's probably not as good. Uh, so don't be afraid to get old stuff. Sell and purge items. This is how to make money. Uh, to to go and buy stuff uh, go through the stuff that you have and if you if there's just things you don't need this is just common sense right um, I think we're still in a place that people are still spending money we've got holidays coming up uh, and I think most of Americans are still kind of spending their money uh, and not in a preparedness way so you know if you have some old camera that you've you know never used it was bought for you as a gift and and you're just never going to use it selling that and taking that money and putting it towards preparedness uh, or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's one way. Scrapping. Scrap metal right now is pretty good. You can make some money off of it. So scrap metal, scrap aluminum, other metals right now. Um, and and you, can, you can make some money there to, to put it back into prepping. Also seasonal work. Um, we've got the, the holiday season coming on. And um, a lot of companies are really needing employees and they're paying really good. Uh, so if you're able to, to pick up a little part-time job, uh, even if it's just for a few weeks and, and you're able to take that money and put it all into to preparedness. So there's some, a few ideas uh, of ways to, to, to prepare on the cheap. And 
some items that if you're, and this is mostly focused on, on food. If you're just starting out or you're just wanting to bulk up on, on your food items. And I, I typically tell people, try to prep with the foods that you normally eat. That way, uh, when you have to live off your preps, it's not such a shock to you. But you also have to con take in consideration, if you're trying to bulk up fast on the amount of food that you have, uh, sometimes you need to kind of alter that a little bit. So, so I think that it's okay to start off with just kind of your basic foods that are cheap and that store a long time on their own. And that's mostly what I'm mentioning here. And from this point on, what I'm going to mention, uh, it's just going to be your normal items that would have a longer shelf life that you normally would eat. Uh, you would stock up on those. The, the big obvious ones that everyone mentions, rice, beans, oatmeal, pasta, that stuff is cheap. Um, you can buy 50 pound bags of it, 25 pound bags of it. Uh, for a, a pretty cheap price. You know, if you walked into the right store with $100, um, you know, you could come out with, you know, a couple of hundred pounds of rice or something like that, or maybe even more if you if you shop around. Uh, so, so look at that kind of stuff. Of course, it needs to be stored properly. You can't just leave it in the bags. You're going to want to put it in like food grade buckets. And, and that's kind of another video. Powdered milk is also an option. If you search around, a lot of times you can find powdered milk and uh, depending on the powdered milk, uh, it's, a good, it's a good protein source to have. Sugar is another one uh, that's added calories. Of course, you're not gonna wanna live off of sugar, uh, but it's certainly calories. Flour, uh, flour can be pretty cheap. Now, if it's, it's flour and not wheat, flour doesn't last nearly as long as wheat does. Whole wheat can last a very, very long time Flour, you're gonna have to store it properly. You can't just leave it in the bags or even just throw it in a bucket and leave it. Uh, freezing it is, is a good way to, to make flour last a lot longer. Canned soups. Uh, canned soups are good because it's a complete meal already in, this, in a can and you don't have to heat it. I mean, yeah, it tastes better if you heat it, but you don't have to. And so it's, it's a quick meal if, you know, kind of hobo in it that you just open that can and you can eat it straight out of the can and you've got a complete meal. So uh, finding some, some cheap, uh, not condensed, but, you know, already uh, ready to eat uh, canned soup is good. Uh, salt with minerals. I mentioned salt earlier. Make sure you're getting your salt with minerals uh, like a sea salt um, or a Himalayan type of salt or something like that. Uh, the Redmond salt. Uh, do not be getting that just plain old salt with iodine, the iodized salt. Uh, it's not going to store as long and it's not going to be healthy. You know, salt, it's not just for flavor or preservation. It's also uh, because there's minerals and stuff in it that we need in our body. And so you want to make sure you get a complete uh, total salt. Uh, tuna is another thing uh, that's an excellent protein and it has a lot of uh, omega oils, fatty acid uh, in the tuna. And tuna has a pretty decent shelf life if it's stored properly. Peanut butter is another one. Uh, peanut butter is a good protein. Um, you know, if, you, if you're eating, it, it, you know, you're poor and the, the apocalypse has happened and you're eating beans and rice, that's not uh, good to just live off of. So if you ate beans and rice and you had some peanut butter and you ate a few scoops of peanut butter every day, uh, you're going to be a lot healthier. And then the last one, it's not so much that it's cheap, um, but it's honey. And honey uh, has a, an extremely long shelf life. It's going to probably outlast you, especially if you store it properly. And, and it's, it's just nutritionally very good. And it even has uh, some medical properties. You know, you can put it on a wound, uh, uh, that kind of stuff. It's antibacterial. So um, I know that this video isn't a complete you know, list of everything that you can do to prep in a cheap way, but I'm hoping that it kind of gets the gears in your brains uh, moving. And then those of you that have other ideas, things that's worked for you, certainly leave those in the comments below because there's a lot of people right now um, that are trying their best to, to prep up and to get ready for everything that's going to happen or that is happening, uh, but they're trying to do it on a much smaller budget. Not everyone can just afford to go out and just boom, you know, well, I'm prepared. I've got everything. Uh, so let's help each other out and come up with some of them ideas. Thank you all for watching. Catch you in the next video.